I'm Ebony Nada, Charcuterie Director for Columbus Craft Meats, and I've been sharing my love of salumi with the world for over 15 years. I'm dedicated to making charcuterie fun for everyone. Today I'm visiting Portland Creamery to meet with cheesemaker John Schnabel, who's sharing the cheesemaking process with us. Happy goats make the most delicious chef, and they're a special part of the family here. All right, John, well, thanks for having me here. Absolutely. And you're the head cheesemaker here at uh, the Creamery, so over your years of time working in this field, when you have the happier goats and the quality of the goats, can you tell in the cheese that you're making and the flavor Absolutely. that comes through? You can almost taste stress on a goat. I mean, it's it really comes out in the cheese that they need to have an easy life, an easy, comfortable life. It comes through in the flavor of In the, the flavor profile, and, wow. that's right. That's, that's super interesting, because it almost seems like they're part of the family, right? When you Absolutely. think about the whole process, the, the goats right. are the biggest part of their family. So the milk was here, and that's where everything started yesterday, right? Right. right. So, so now this is considered curd, Okay. and it sat overnight from yesterday. So day one is the pasteurization, day two right here is the dip, okay. and day three is pulling cheese off the rack. So okay. it's a three-day process, 72 three hours. Process. Your other John is, is grabbing the buckets out of here and putting it into these straining bags to, to do what? What are, what are we creating? On? We're basically trying to take the whey out of the curd to create cheese. Okay. And we'll eliminate about 80% of it. Okay. 80% of the liquid will be strained out and... Yeah, yeah it reminds me like at Columbus we have like every one of our salamis is in a drip room where it begins the fermentation process. Kind of similar to this. We're, we're stuffing the casings but the amount of time it takes in the fermentation process, right. it weighs so much less than when it started with. That's all that time and energy and, and love that goes into that. Condensed love. So 80% of that milk would go to waste. Yeah. Um, and we're able to make a good caramel out of it, you know, uh, delicious. We do try to use it all. We don't try to waste yeah. anything. You know, with us being such a small company, we can, very versatile. Yeah. You know, we have six different flavors mm -hmm. and, you know, we could just get that out in a three day thing, nice and fresh for, for salami boards. Yeah, uh, that's great. <laughs> we try to be farm to table. Yeah. It tastes even better when you see the goats in the background and it does. understanding the, the artisan farmstead side of things and, and really just understand that whole process makes, I, I think charcuterie board so much more fun and the flavors so much better. Really, I, I'm excited to even try the caramels and all the other cool stuff yeah. that you've really grown this company on. I, like, I, I can't wait to put these together and make something amazing. So thanks again for letting me come by. Thank you, we're happy yeah. to be a part. Thanks for coming out. Definitely. It was cool to see the similarities between the cheese making process and how our charcuterie is crafted. We said goodbye to the goats and headed to Elephant's Delicatessen to talk with owner Sean Fells of Portland Creamery. So Sean, thank you for having us. We're here at uh, Elephant's Delicatessen um, where you guys sell a lot of your Portland Creamery products. So tell me a little bit more about Portland Creamery and how you guys started. Absolutely. Portland Creamery is a farmstead creamery, which means all of our manufacturing happens at the same location as the milking and the herd lifts. Yep. Uh, we're a very small uh, business that is probably only about 200 square feet of manufacturing space. Yeah, we were uh, in that spot. So it was <laughs> nice, but we saw all the happy goats and the uh, goat dairy out there is absolutely incredible in terms of uh, genetics and, and quality. Uh, and that's one of the key aspects of the Chev. Uh, without really, really good quality milk that is treated very gently, you can't make a, a super clean, fresh cheese like uh, Portland Creamery's. Yeah, I think that's so important, really, when you think about, like, Chev especially. Like, some people, when they think of Chev, they're like, oh, the goat cheese, I'm not in love with the tanginess of it. Absolutely. There's a certain amount of um, flavor that comes from the animal natively. But what you taste in a lot of different chefs on the market is a result of processing and having pumps that that milk runs through, breaking it down before it gets to the vat. So okay. by being uh, five feet from our milking parlor yeah. at Portland Creamery, we're able to make a cheese that is super clean, refreshing, 
um, it's tart, uh, and it plays well with so many different foods. Uh, and then as we add things like the Marionberry habanero jelly for the sweet fire or mm -hmm. the black garlic and truffle oils, uh, you can really change how that's perceived. Oh, I love that. And, and like really when it comes to making a charcuterie board, especially when you're pairing it with the salami and really making sure that Columbus salami flavor comes through, we spend the same amount of passion and energy in our product like you guys do, creating all that beautiful flavor and something to be celebrated. So what I wanted to first start on first is really just finding a good pairing that really calls out the umami of our salami, the saltiness and all that fermented goodness with your chef and really still getting all that tanginess. So what I wanted to do with the organ chef was just take a little bit of a dollop. Is this, is this the right size dollop for what you think on a normal? What that? I what I put on a pairing is probably a bit more than the yeah. average person. The, that the looks, passion that looks involved there. Okay, so this is good here. So we're gonna do the cantaloupe, which has that nice sweetness and smoothness to it. And then we're gonna pair that with a finocchiano. So this is one of my favorite salumi that we make. So for this salami, you see that wild fennel seed in every single slice. Yeah, so gorgeous. slow aging that all the way through and really making sure that flavor comes through. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna use a chef to really just kind of keep that salami wrapped around it so you have that perfect bite. Before we get to that, tell me a little bit more about uh, the caramels. Cheese making is really just concentrating certain parts of the milk. Uh, what you're left with that way has some protein in it, it has some native salts in it, and it has a bunch of lactic acid because of the fermentation of the cheese. Interesting. So we use that whey as the base to make a caramel. And what we end up with is a caramel that's not only sweet, as you would expect from uh, a caramel sauce, mm -hmm. but also is balanced with savory notes, uh, salt, and, and then that tartness. And it recovers all of that nutritive value from the farmland that we would otherwise have to process or, or do something else with. I think that's so amazing, when you're, especially when you're talking about recycling and using all that goodness that the farm brings and the goats bring in. So let's give that a try, actually. I haven't opened up all of them yet. So it is flavored with a cinnamon and a vanilla character. Um, and oh, wow. they play really, really well together. Yeah, it's so good. And it's almost like an explosion of the flavor, too. It's sweet like honey, but it also has all those vows that you were talking about, that little tanginess. The vanilla is not too strong, too, so oh. Let's be able to bring a tear to my eye, <laughs> how good it is. So just bringing a little drizzle onto it. So again, taking that Portland Oregon Chef with the cantaloupe as that sweet base, and then just wrapping it around this finocchione. And feel free, to, let's, let's dig in and try a All bite right. of that. I can't and wait. I think that's gonna really kind of pop in terms of the flavor. So cheers. Cheers. So you're getting that tanginess of the cheese still exploding. It's the first thing to kind of hit your palate. And then. Mm -hmm all that saltiness and the fennel seed from the finocchione along with that sweetness just all coming together in one bite. It is absolutely delicious. That bite was phenomenal. It's almost Thank like um, five layers. For like the everyday shopper when they're looking for a good chef, I think what are the attributes that you're looking for like across the nation when you're going to your everyday grocery store trying to find a good one to use? You want a clean product. Uh, you don't want something that tastes like a, a goat, honestly. And so in a good chef, you want it to be clean and tart and refreshing. Um, and you can tell a lot about uh, if that's gonna be the case based on uh, the way that that product is being made. Yeah, the cleanliness, the tartness, and the creaminess just automatically comes to play as soon as it hits your tongue and your palate. So. I think that's that's something special that you guys are doing right. So I, I want to dive in more into some of the other varieties of flavors, so like the Herbe de Provence, for example. I think really calling out that herbaceous notes. The salami I want to pair with it, I love Rosette de Leon. This is one of my favorite salami that we make. So with this one, we're actually dry aging it with uh, a casing and it's adding some white peppercorn to it. This is more of a French style of salami. And that dryness goes perfectly with that herbaceous notes and all the fresh produce all that water and crispness needs something a little drier to balance it with. So this is what we're gonna go with here. And then what I do love adding is some spiciness. So you could go a little chili oil crunch or I like gochujang sauce as well on this. But what we're gonna do here today is do a little more Tunisian like uh, harissa spice. So the harissa spice really kind of adds a nice peppery note to it. We're gonna put a little bit on there and then grab that cucumber, just a nice, small dollop on this one because this is a smaller cucumber slice. 
and then just a little bit of harissa spice right there and then just get, add that to the to the whole thing right there with the rosé de Leon. so the cucumber top. on the top so that way that's kind of your first texture bite that you're going to get right there and then really it's that herbaceousness in those with the herb de provence and whatnot in there so what do you think on that that is phenomenal the harissa um and then the refreshing crunchy cucumber and the chev to tie it together uh, with the meat is just incredible. Yeah, you're using that chev almost as a blanket. Because that, it's like that smooth, nice blanket along with that crispness and that heat. It really just that nice balance of everything together. So. And it almost acts as an intermediary in the flavor profiles between your fresh and, and your cured meat so that they all blend uh, just perfectly. Oh, totally. And you know, you could switch and sub in peppers. And that tangy note actually goes great with our Italian dry, too. Italian dry always has that little tangy note to match with a sourdough baguette. But when you think about the tanginess of pairing it with something like a chef, it also goes fantastic, too. So Absolutely. Can't go wrong with Yeah, that, they, so. they play perfectly together. Well, um, that's one of the things about chef. It's, it, salami and chef are meant to be together, I think. In terms of that creaminess and nice balance together, it's always about the meat and cheese. That's the relationship we're always trying to really highlight. And then that acid and the crunch and the heat and the sweetness just elevate everything else together. Okay, you, you yeah. gotta try this on. Yeah, no, I wanna try this. <laughs> so let's give this one a try too. So this so is this is the ginger turmeric. This is the ginger turmeric, okay. Yeah. So try this one on the little culpa. I think this is the perfect thing for the culpa too because it's that meaty centerized flavor there. So, oh, oh yeah. yeah. Yeah, you gotta give that one a try. And just the, the culpa, when you're talking about the culpa cut of the shoulder, just dry aged, you don't get anything but that beautiful meatiness. And when you balance it with that turmeric and ginger, mm. and give it that base, oh man, that's as good as it could get, man. So thank you, that, that, that's amazing. We've had uh, way too much fun with the goats <laughs> and your whole team, so it's been a great time, thank you. Thank you for coming, this was yeah. great. Yeah, pleasure. High quality milk is necessary to craft chef that's fresh, tart, and plays well with so many other foods like our charcuterie. I'm happy I had the chance to experience the traditional cheese making practices of Portland Creamery. I deepened my knowledge of chef and enjoyed learning about how they create a unique caramel syrup from whey. The flavors we enjoyed together in these perfect charcuterie bites were incredible.